Brad Lorenzen is a detail man. When he sets foot on a speedway, he's all business. Casual conversation doesn't interest him. He's a single-minded, thorough, dedicated professional. And that's why he wins so many races. Freddy is particularly concerned this year because he has a new crew headed up by Chief Mechanic Jack Sullivan. Sullivan has an excellent record, and they hit it off well. But Freddy, who started out as his own phase on top of everything, a 30-year-old bachelor and an ex-carpenter from Elmhurst, Illinois. Fred Lorenzen has been racing for 10 years. Twice USAC National Stock Car Champion. He switched to NASCAR in 1960, campaigning as owner, driver, and chief mechanic. He had trouble at first, but he learned the business of big-time stock car racing. Freddie found out that he couldn't do everything well, but the firm of Holman and Moody the nation's stock car racing experts saw in him the makings of a first-class driver. They invited Freddie to join their organization in 1961. And the results have been spectacular. Freddie won his first NASCAR race, a 250-miler, at Atlanta and then went on to win the next three Atlanta 500s in a row. It was the first time anyone had ever won any major racing event three times in a row. What's his secret? Lorenzen's race strategy has always been to hold back, saving everything for a finishing kick. This year, he and his mechanic Sullivan are going one step further. They have set up the car with a slightly lower gear ratio than is customarily used for stock car racing. Freddie won't be able to tap all the speed his car is capable of, but he will be able to use what he has more efficiently. The classic example of Lorenzen's race strategy was the Charlotte 400 in 1964. By stretching his early stops, he forced Richard Petty to gamble on his last stop. Petty either had to come in and give up the lead or take a chance and stay out there longer than he should have. The gamble paid off for Lorenzen. To date, he has won more money than anyone ever has racing stock cars. His high was $113,000 in 1963. But the one big race that Freddie has never won is the Daytona 500. Call it racing luck, call it whatever you like. This one has always eluded him, and it's the biggest. The winner's share for this race of races is more than Freddie earned in his first five years of driving. To a guy who came up the hard way, Daytona has that something extra, and it demands everything a car and driver have to give. It takes brains and brawn to win the Daytona 500. In 1963, Freddie used too much brawn he ran too hard, too soon, while Tiny Lund lay back and stretched his early pit stops. Lorenzen ran out of gas seven laps from the end of the race. His quick fuel stop put him 24 seconds behind Lund, who kept running and crossed the finish line first. His carburetor bone dry. Now, it's time for the seventh annual Daytona 500. And Lorenzen's competition is as tough as ever. Ned Jarrett, driver of number 11 Ford, puts his crew through a pit rehearsal. Jarrett's the king of the dirt tracks and NASCAR's winningest driver. A little horseplay keeps Bobby Johns and Junior Johnson loose. But Big Junior, the world's fastest chicken farmer, who won the Daytona 500 in 1960, gets all serious once he's inside that car. Marvin Panch won the Daytona 500 in 1961. He's been one of NASCAR's most consistent drivers ever since. Tiny Lund, who beat Lorenzen in 1963, is here too. 
and so is Daryl Derringer, whose Mercury represents the top threat to the favored Ford. Time for the first shakedown cruise. The car is ready, but not fine-tuned. It's the driver's job to tell the crew what adjustments he needs to make the car a winner. Is there one best way to set up a car for the Daytona International Speedway? Yes, one best way for each driver and each car. Like anything, driving is a matter of individual taste. Drafting, that's the technique that pays off at Daytona. The front car pulls, the back car pushes, and an air cushion locks them together. Both cars run faster. Daytona, with its long stretches, is the only speedway you can really draft on all the way around. Johnson, Lorenzen, Balmer, and Panch try a four-way draft. Quicky stuff. Traveling at 275 feet per second, a driver has to watch RPMs, check tire wear, note handling characteristics, and engine performance, all while driving at super speeds. It's not surprising when things get out of shape from time to time. It's hard enough just to hang on to 4,000 pounds of charging iron going 180 miles an hour. What's more, it takes just as much skill to keep out of big trouble once the car's gone sideways. Earl Baumer does an expert job of bringing his car down off the bank without further damage. This is what it looks like when you're in the groove and everything is going right. This is what it can look like when everything goes wrong. cars are out of the big race. The drivers are uninjured, but most of them lost their rides for this year's 500. Ned Jarrett's gesture says it all. Winning the big race is now the only topic of conversation. No more time to work on the cars. It's all strategy. When to charge and when to hold back. That's what drivers and crews have to work out. Practice is over. Tomorrow, they race. Clean uniforms, sunny skies, bright smiles, pretty girls. Everything is clean and bright and new for race day. Twenty-two gallons. That's the legal limit. Every driver wants the maximum power and distance he can get from a racing fuel. A full tank and let's go race. Is Fred Lorenzen ready this year? As ready as he'll ever be because the clock has run out. It's go time. And it's show time for race fans. Time for music. Time for excitement. for fun. But time has brought change. Clouds fill the once blue sky. If it rains, Bill France, NASCAR president, explains the race will be official after 250 miles. New elements for drivers to think about. Wind and weather. It'll make a difference in race strategy. Should you be a tiger and charge early? You can't afford to hold back too long, if it rains. And there'll be driving problems, complicated by the size of the Daytona Speedway. It may be raining on one part of the two and a half mile trioval and dry on another part, but there's no more time to worry about it. Just time to concentrate on the business of driving.
80,000 racing fans are on their feet. 80,000 pairs of eyes are trained on 43 racing stock cars as they roar through the green flag. The seventh annual Daytona 500 is underway. A blown engine on the first lap. And right in the middle of the pack. Good thing the driver didn't lose it. He won't even get to go around once. Through the third turn, Junior Johnson is running in front with Derringer, Johns, Jarrett, Lorenzen, and Panch close behind. When they ask Junior how fast the pace is going to be, he always gives the same reply. As long as I'm in the race, flat out all the way. Now Derringer in number 16 Mercury drops back as Johns in number 7 Ford and Jarrett in number 11 Ford move up on Johnson. Lorenzen is holding fifth, Panch sixth. Jarrett decides to charge early like Johnson. He passes Johns and takes second. At 165 miles an hour, he moves up to draft with Junior. isn't going to draft with anyone today. Back to racing. And the leaders are lapping deep into the field. It's Johnson, number 27, Jarrett, number 11, Panch, number 21, moves into third, and Lorenzo, number 28, is fourth. All Fords up front. stop begin early. Jared is in for an unscheduled stop. Marvin Patch in number 21 Ford moves into second place behind Junior. Bobby Johns number seven is third and Lorenzen lays back and forth. Daryl Derringer pits early too, dropping well behind the leader. Still Johnson and Patch, first and second, with Johns and Lorenzen battling for third. Lap 24. From now on, crews will be expecting the leaders to pit. The experts figured from 60 to 80 miles on a set of tires, from 24 to 32 laps. Still running, and Junior's really burning him up. How much longer can he stay out there? Question answered. His right front blue. Junior Johnson's ride is over. At 70 miles, 18 of the 43 starters are out of the race. It's a regular traffic jam heading into the pits with everyone going to school on Junior Johnson's example. Hans, Johns, and Lorenzen are all in the same lap. Whoever gets in and out first will have the advantage. Jarrett and Derringer are one lap off the pace. Johns leads the pack out with Patch right on his tail. It looks like the pace lap all over again. Jarrett gets out next, and then Lorenzen. flag, and Panch takes the lead from John. When skies 
clouds getting steadily darker, the leaders begin to experiment to test their speed. John's tried the lead. Patch takes it back. They seesaw back and forth because they know rain could mean the end of the race. Once the halfway point has been passed, the 250 mile mark, whoever is in the lead when the race is stopped or goes on the caution flag is the winner. Even Lorenzen, who has been holding back, tries running in front. Can't let yourself be squeezed out or caught napping at the wrong moment now. Lap 69, 173 miles, and Patch and John's pit. They've really been stretching. They've gone 105 miles since their last pit stop. But Lorenzen is still going, smoothly and carefully, Never charging too hard, he puts a full lap between himself and Panch and John. The lower gear ratio is really letting him stretch those pit stops. Panch gets back into the race and so does John's, but Lorenzen has a one lap lead. Lorenzen is still running. He's gone 10 laps farther than Panch and John's between pit stops. He's covered an incredible 130 miles. his crew brings him in. 132 and a half miles on one set of tires and one 22 gallon load of fuel. The strategy really paid off. Panch and John's battle for first. Lorenzen's crew keeps an eye out for the competition and gets him out in 35 seconds. Lorenzen joins Patch and Johns in third place in the same lap. The skies are darkening now. Quickly, Lorenzen closes the gap. The rain could come any moment. Herb Shannon blows his engine. come by, and now the race is official. they passed the halfway mark. And now Lorenzen has the lead. Hanch and John's pit for the third time, but Lorenzen has a one-lap lead. comes in the next 10 laps, Lorenzen's got it. Patch pours on the coal. He wants to get inside Lorenzen's one lap lead for Freddy's next pit stop. Patch moves up on Freddy and spins out. a last desperate attempt to put his car within striking distance of first place if the rain holds off. The sky is black now as Lorenzen holds first place, unchallenged. And here comes the rain. The caution light means slow down and hold position. The track is getting slick. And the spectators are getting wet. The 
train is coming down hard now. And so the remaining 24 cars are lined up behind the pace car. The faithful wait as the rain comes down steadily for more than an hour. And then it's over. Fred Lorenzen is the winner. Fearless Freddy finally did it at Daytona. He's the king of the super speedways with the biggest purse in stock car racing in his pocket. He'd want everything now, including the hearts of the fans who will be out there again, rain or shine, wherever he may race, to cheer him on to victory.